Hey what's up guys this is GK. So in this video we are going to learn about GCP's VPC firewall rules. So by end of this video you will learn firewall rules, the firewall rule components, the direction of the traffic, implied rules and some default rules that you would see in a default network and we will also go through the console. As always you will find timestamps in the description. Before we go into the firewall rules, I highly recommend watching my previous video on the VPC network. So VPC network, as you all know, is a logical network inside a project. You know, for example, in this diagram, you see that I have a project ABC and I have a network which is default. Whenever you create a project, you get a default auto mode network. So that's called default. And then I just have two VMs inside my network. So this green denotes the firewall rule. So firewall rules are always applied to the network and the project. So you cannot distribute a firewall rule to other network. So it's always within the network. So as you all know, the firewall rules help you to control your ingress traffic and egress traffic. So the traffic that is coming into your network and the traffic that is leaving your network. So obviously without firewall rules, your instances are prone to malicious attacks from internet or from anywhere. So firewall rules are most important as part of your VPC security to protect your instances. So though the firewall rules are applied at a network level, but they are distributed in nature because you can apply a firewall rule specifically to a VM. And most importantly, the firewall rules in GCP are global. It's because your VPC is global. You can uh, combine two regions so that it's, it's global in nature and that's why your firewall rules are also global. So a firewall rule can be applied to all the instances like you can create a firewall rule and you can say that this rule will be applied for all the instances inside the network. So it can be applied to all the instances with one rule or you can apply the firewall rule to a specific instance by specifying a tag and you can also apply a firewall rule to a service account so meaning if you attach a rule to a service account and that service account is attached to a vm so the rule will be applied to the vm so these are the three ways that you can apply a firewall rule and firewall rules only support ipv4 connections and you cannot share the rules among different networks even if you peer the networks for instance when you create the rules the rules are always to that specific vpc and let's say now you peer this default VPC with some other VPC, your firewall rules are not shared with the other VPC. And firewall rules are stateful. And this is very important to remember for your associate exam or in general anything. I'm going to go into more details when I'm talking about specific examples. But stateful is nothing but when a connection is allowed through the firewall in either direction, return traffic matching this connection is also allowed. So let's say as an example, you have a firewall rule for VM1 with an egress to internet, right? And then you are talking to www.google.com from this VM. So now the response from that Google's web server is also allowed to the VM. You do not have to explicitly mention any other rule to allow that, you know, response from a Google web server in this case. So whenever you create a project and you create a network, by default, you get implied rules and these implied rules you cannot see it in the console but there are two implied rules one implied rule is allow egress traffic from your network meaning you can connect to outside uh, from your vm so that's egress allow egress rule and then the other implied rule is deny ingress rule so the priority for these two rules are the lowest priority which is 65535 so meaning that you know whenever you create any other rule on top of it it will be overwritten with that rule because you will always have a, a rule priority more than this one so these two are very important to understand whenever you have a network you know you always have these two implied rules which are by default created so that would allow egress traffic and deny ingress traffic and those are set with the lowest priority and the priority always starts from 0 to 65535, 0 being the highest priority and then 65535 being the lowest priority. 
So let's say you create another rule with you know 5000 or something to you know let's say allow ingress traffic then obviously it will overwrite the implied rule and again whenever you create a network you'll always have some pre-populated rules which is the you know default allow internal meaning that the communication between vm and vm2 or any internal traffic is allowed and default allow ssh again from vm1 to vm2 you can do ssh internally within that network and default allow rdp again you know uh, if you want to connect to a database from vm you can do that again internally and then icmp to ping uh, to the vms or to the instances so these are some of the pre-populated rules that you uh, find in the default network or, or the network that you uh, create inside the project with an auto mode a firewall rule has different components so when you create the firewall rule you give a priority first when you create a rule as we have uh, seen in my previous slide it starts from 0 to 65535 and 65535 is already taken by the implied rule so you're left with 60 to 65534 and anywhere in this between you can create a priority and then you can create a rule so now let's say if you do not want to set the priority or if you want to leave it as default or blank then it would take you know 1000 as a, a default priority and then you would define action which is allow or deny and this is for the inbound rule and same way you would do for outbound or egress rule as well the enforcement here would be enabled or disabled and the target is where you want to apply this rule whether you want to apply for all the instances in the vpc or you want to apply for a instance with a specific network tag or instances by a service account source has to be defined here for the ingress because you are controlling the incoming traffic for that instance so you can control uh, with through the ip address and then or by a network tag or by a service account again and the protocol is like tcp and you know port you can mention what port you want to block or you want to allow so that's inbound again the difference you would see in the outbound is you would put here the destination because you are now sending traffic from your instance outside and you can you can specifically target where you want to send the traffic so now with that let's look at a very good example that was given in the documentation and you know i highly recommend going to the documentation as well i'll paste the link in the description so this is for the ingress traffic and if you look at this diagram very carefully so try to focus on the network tag here which is allow inbound so for that the firewall rule is the direction which is ingress and action is allow and protocols tcp and source range 000 which means from anywhere and the target tags are allow inbound so any vm or any instance that's going to use this target tag will have this firewall rule attached to that vm so here you have this network tag as a allow inbound and here the network tag is something else so only this instance is going to have uh, this firewall rule and the priority is 1000 now i'm going to ask you a question and uh, do some research and put that in the comment section let's say that you create a firewall rule with same priority and you know one is allow and another one is deny so which would take more precedence or what would happen to that firewall rule so let me know in the comment section you know the answer all right so now the other firewall rule that we see here is again direction in the ingress and then action is allow the protocols tcp the source tag is a source tags is client and the target tags is server and priority is 1000 so here this rule is applied to vm3 as you can see here the target tags is server and you can see it is applied to a server and the source tags here is only to a specific instance meaning this vm can allow the traffic only from vm4 as you can see here the network tag of vm4 is client and here for this firewall rule it says that for this vm that is using this firewall rule the source tag is client which means like you know it can only allow the traffic coming from vm4 or any vm that has the network tag as client all right so now if you look at this vm1 do you think this vm1 can take traffic from internet but yes the answer is correct 
if you thought it's going to take the traffic from internet because it says the source range as 000 and also most importantly it has external ip now though this has an ingress rule so let's say that somebody from internet accessed a web server on this site you know on this vm let's say you have a httpd web server now what would happen is like the response will also go to that uh, client from the internet because you know as we have discussed before the firewall rules are stateful and now in the case of vm2 it has an external ip but it cannot get the traffic from internet because it does not have any firewall rule attached to the vm2 so the implied firewall rule deny ingress traffic right so that's the implied firewall rule so that would be applied here so nobody can access this vm from internet all right hopefully this clears a lot of uh, doubts in your mind and then now let's look at the other example which is egress so in the egress you can see there are three firewall rules first firewall rule is direction egress and action deny and protocols all target locked vms and destination range 000 and priority 1000 so this is applied to vm2 and this is applied to the block vms yeah only for vm2 the second firewall rule is direction egress action deny protocol tcp blocked local destination ranges uh, this one and so 192.168.10-24 priority is 1000 this is applied for vm3 and then the firewall rule direction ingress action allow protocol all and protocols all and then source 000 target tag server and priority 1000 and this is applied to the vm4 okay now let's look at what's going to happen from with vm1 so vm1 has no specified firewall rule here so the implied allow egress rule lets it send traffic to any destination right so you know the default implied egress is allowed so it can send traffic to any destination but the ingress will be blocked so basically so vm1 can send the traffic but also it is subjected to the ingress rules of the vms here right so if there is any ingress rule that would block or you know do anything then this vm cannot talk to that vm so now here vm1 can send the traffic to vm4 because vm4 has an ingress rule allowing connections from any ip address right so if you see here the server uh, you see it has an ingress rule and it is allowing from any source ip addresses and because vm1 has an external ip address it can also send traffic to the internet and because uh, you know the rule firewall rules are stateful you'll also get the response back from the internet to that specific packet or or specific connection uh, when it has established now as far as vm2 is concerned uh, we have a network tag which is blocked uh, vms and it has deny to all the destination so it cannot reach to the net internet because it has an egress block uh, the outgoing traffic is blocked from here and also the outgoing is outgoing traffic is also blocked to vm4 because it is 000 outgoing traffic from this instance is completely blocked and now vm3 has a network tag block local meaning it's going to block all the local ip addresses with the specific net uh, specific range and the range is clearly given here so it's going to deny all the egress traffic outgoing traffic from this vm to any internal vms so vm3 here uh, is it can never send tcp traffic to vm4 though vm4 has an ingress rule to allow anybody but you know since the vm3's egress is blocking that it cannot send the traffic to vm4 but the exception here is that you know it can send the udp traffic because it we are only blocking tcp here i think that's pretty much it now with this let's go to the console and let's look at you know the default network i'm going to select uh, one project here that i have so let me quickly go through that so once you select the project uh, go to the network vpc network or you know select network here vpc network and you should be able to select the vpc network once you have that 
once you open that you would see a default network so this is your vpc network and when you create a vpc network again please go back to my previous tutorial you can either create a auto mode network or you can create a custom custom network either automatic or custom so if you create a custom then you have to specify the firewall rules one by one and then all those things happen or if you specify automatic you will get some default firewall rules uh, like you see here and you can see the priorities of those and as you can see these two you know default implied rules you cannot change them or delete them because they are applied automatically to your network when you create an auto network with the priority with the lowest priority and the next lowest are the default firewall rules that you see here allow icmp internally to this network or uh, allow internal or you know allow rdp uh, to to the instances all right so now with that i'm gonna click on firewall and since this is the default firewall rule is an auto network firewall rule uh, so it has all the default firewall rules now if i select one rule let's say i select icmp and I, if i click on edit here you would see that allow icmp from anywhere and this has priority of 65534 so all the instances so this rule is applied to all the instances in the network or you can specify specific tags or a specific service account right and then here you know the tcp uh, sorry uh, the protocol is icmp it's not tcp and then you can disable the rule by clicking on disable here so that's how the vpc firewall rules are and i would highly recommend playing around with these firewall rules uh, with the example that i have discussed and in the documentation and i hope you got something out of this and this is very important uh, for your exam or in general to understand the concepts of firewall rules Thank you so much for watching this video and let me know in the comment section if you have any difficulties understanding this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and most importantly, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.